54 year old man is about to the emergency department 30 minutes after being hit by a car uh, he has left side at tonic lung seizure and one episode of vomiting while being transported to the hospital is not oriented to person time or place physical examination shows flaccid paralysis of all extremities CT scan of the head is shown here, right here. The patient's symptoms are likely the result of the hemorrhage in which of the following structures. You can have a good look at the CT scan. It's quite obvious what's wrong here. And let's have a look at the options now. Um, so where is the bleeding entirely? Is it into the ventricular system? Is it between dura and arachnoid? Is it between skull and dura? Is it inside the cerebral parenchyma or is it between arachnoid and the parameter? CT scan very clearly shows subarachnoid hemorrhage, you know, hyper intensity in the cisternal region here, and sadly, this indicates blood. So, this is generally you know, subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, very, very specific for subarachnoid hemorrhage. CT scan shows hyper intensity in the cisternal region here, right here. So where is the subarachnoid? Um, it's between arachnoid matter and biopter. So it's, um, you know, it was quite obvious from this one. It cannot be anywhere else. If it were a, you know, ischemic stroke, there would be high hypo intensity somewhere here. Or if it, it were a extradural hematomite uh, formed of convex hyper intensity somewhere here. In the frontal and temporal areas, but it's not that. So, right here, so that's no hemorrhage. Generally, occurs due to trauma or rupture of a berry aneurysm. So, um, you will need to you know, pay attention to the history. This man has trauma of being hit by a car, so that leads to a berry hemorrhage. Um, they also gave CT scan out. So, here's a ventricular hemorrhage. These are the ventricles and hyper intensity in the ventricles. <clears throat> um, the, there's a subdural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage generally occurs, you know, chronically more, and hyper intensity is the concave shape. It isn't limited by any suture lines, so it can occur in a concave shape and it can involve large areas. This is subdural hemorrhage. They give the same image. So, this is also a subdural hemorrhage, but um, epidural hemorrhage actually has con concave hyperintensity in the front, um, you know, temporal area. And these are intracerebral hemorrhage, you know, you can easily identify that as um, bleeding hyperintensity in the, you know, in the matter of the brain. So, it's been Again, give you all the CT scans. These are very, very high yield because they generally give CT scans and you'll be asked to identify how, how these occur. You know, they will be asked you to identify the structure that is involved. Generally, berry aneurysms and PCOM aneurysms or anything like that is involved in subarachnoid hemorrhages. Um, you can talk about subdural hemorrhages, you know, they uh, the person is really uh, an old person and, you know, with brain atrophy, um, plus minus trauma. They can easily have subdural hemorrhage. It may be definitely from the veins, the bridging veins. So, this the subdural hemorrhage is generally chronic, it plants slowly. Um, epidural hemorrhage is, a, uh, hemorrhage is from a middle meningeal artery or something. So, um, as it is an arterial the hemorrhage, there's rapid, rapid expansion. <clears throat> um, this is an image of epidural, um, subdural hemorrhage. There's something wrong with the, you know, the system I reported. And intraperineal hemorrhage is generally occurs in hypertensive patients or uh, amyloid angiop angiopathy. It is quite common, you know, in old people with um, hypertension and treated hypertension can have bleeding uh, in, inside the cerebral matter. So it causes cerebral in the cerebral language. Thanks for watching. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe for more.